All right, welcome everybody to week three, day two. Let's go over the uh, last quiz that some of y'all had trouble with. So, average score, 49%. Pretty normal, pretty normal. This is one of these really important concepts, but it's hard to get sometimes. So let me show you the, uh, the way to approach these sorts of problems. So, or maybe I can show you the wrong way of doing it, all right? The wrong way is you just look at the conclusion that I have here. Sound, <laughs> you know? Or, um, I'm a chicken, mm, that's all right. Invalid, right? Mm, wrong, okay? That's not how you do it. So let's go through this one at a time. Uh, is this argument valid, invalid, or sound? And and by the way, valid in this case means valid but not sound, and this means valid and sound. Right? Um, premise one: all mammals have hair. It's true. I even give that to you. Okay. Premise two: you're a mammal. Sure hope so. If not, let me know. I'll fix you great. <laughs> Also, question: Did we have to do the Zybooks assignment? Yeah, that's why it was. A, that's why it was an assignment. <laughs> but you know, uh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so yeah, the premise is true. The premise is true. So, um, there's two possibilities if the two premises are true. Either the logic works or the logic doesn't work. Okay. So all x have y. You are an x, therefore you have y. That is a valid bit of logic. If all members of group X are red and you're a member of group X, you are red is logical. Yep. Yep. So that is sound. Sound is when both premises are true and the logic works. Yep. And we're going to talk more about what makes logic work today. This argument valid and valid or sound. Uh, so, premise one: If the integer, if an integer is negative, the absolute value of that integer is negative one times the integer. Um, the integer is non-negative; the absolute value is equal to it. Conclusion: The absolute value of an integer must always be greater than the integer. Um, no, this is equal to, not greater than. So. The absolute value of five is five, not six. Right. So, um, greater than is not the same thing as equal. Okay. The conclusion doesn't follow from the premises. If you have two things that uh, this one is greater, you know the the absolute value is greater, but this one, uh, it's equal, and it's it's either going to be one, it's either going to be one or the other. So you can't say it will always be greater. Okay? So that's invalid. The logic does not follow. Let's let you go back and do them. You're due a while ago. Uh, we'll talk about the Zy books in a second. Okay. Valid, invalid, and sound. Premise one, you are what you eat. So if you are X, if you eat X, you become X. If you eat X, you become X. I've eaten a chicken. Therefore, I'm a chicken. So, why is this valid? <laughs> right? Because, again, most people, they just look at the, they just look at the conclusion, like, nah, it's wrong. And so you have 57% of the students going like, nah, that's clearly wrong, invalid. There's two different kinds of wrong. Right? There's two different kinds of wrong. One kind of wrong is the logic doesn't follow. Like in this case, the absolute value must always be greater than. The logic doesn't work. Sometimes it'll be greater than. Sometimes it'll be equal to. So the logic here is wrong. If the logic is wrong, it's invalid. 
and it doesn't matter if the premises are true or not. In this case, the premises are true. It doesn't matter. It's invalid. Yeah. For this one, um, it's wrong, not because of the logic. If you eat X, you become X. I've eaten X, therefore I become X. Like, the logic for that is fine. The logic's fine. It's just the premises are wrong. You don't turn into a chicken if you get a chicken. Okay. So that is invalid. Or, uh, sorry, it's valid, not uh, not invalid. Okay. The logic works. The premises are wrong. That's the definition of valid, but not so. Okay. I didn't really get the quiz, but I'm glad to see that I'm learning from my mistakes. There will be another quiz. And, in fact, I can uh, give you some... And give you a preview of it. Uh, invalid valid sound quiz two. Boom! It's live now. And let's let's even preview it. Okay. Special bonus for those students who watch the lecture and not just take the quiz. Hmm. All humans are mammals. All humans are chordates. You know what a chordate is? Somebody with a backbone. Okay. So, uh, what are chordates? Great question. So, chordate is something that's a um, something with a backbone. A vertebrae. Right. So, uh, all humans are in mammalia, which is the group of mammals, and um, all mammals are chordates. So, there are no, there are no non-mammal, uh, non-chordate mammals. Is this a retake? Nope. I'm just giving you, uh, I'm making it easier for you because y'all didn't do well in the last one, which is normal. So I'm making it easy for you by previewing it for you. So, um, assume humans exist, which is technically a third premise. But, uh, this is how Aristotle did it. Aristotle just assumed that his arguments had at least one person. And then, sneak peek exclusively for people that attend lecture, yes. Uh... Also, the reason why I'm doing this is because yesterday I sent out attendance reminders to um, six students who haven't been doing the class. So, um, it, it's really important that you participate because it's critical thinking. Critical thinking you can't do just by like watching it. You have to, you have to, you have to do it. You know, you have to practice critical thinking. You can't just like sit back and watch a lecture and take a quiz and be like, I'm a critical thinker now. No, you got to, you got to actively do it. Uh, it, and it is recorded, yeah. So you can you can think about this as long as you want, because you are watching the lecture. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to give you the answer, but uh, I'll let you think about it. So if all humans are mammals, and all humans are chordates, the the conclusion is some chordates are mammals. All X or Y, all X or Z. Therefore, some Z or Y. It's the form. Okay. So think about it. You know, try try uh, other examples. All all squares are rectangles. All squares are rhombuses. Therefore, some rhombuses are rectangles. Is that true or false? Yeah, you, you have to think about it. Like you have to try, you have to try it on, like uh, taste it. You know, like, hmm, is that always true? Okay. You tempted to share your thought process? Go for it. Share your thought process. Okay. Uh, is this argument valid and valid or sound? I assume humans exist. Uh, premise one, all humans are mammals. Okay. So was before. Premise two, no mammals have feathers. I don't mean owning feathers, but like, you know, growing feathers, you know, from your skin. All humans are mammals. No mammals have feathers. Therefore, no humans have feathers. 
all x or y, no y or z, therefore no x or z. All x or y, no y or z, therefore no x or z. I'll just say that sum makes this argument one point away from sound. Sum. Uh, there, you know, if you want to, I don't know. If you, sum coordinates are mammals. I mean, are some are some coordinates not mammals? Like um, birds, right? All humans are mammals. All humans are coordinates. Therefore, some coordinates are mammals. Uh, it's only true if there is a human, by the way. But, um, I got confused thinking it sounds logical versus it's correct. Yeah, yeah, it's normal, it's normal, and that's and that's why I do these quizzes, which are a very low point value thing in the long run. Quiz will be submitted in five minutes. Yeah, cool. Um, that's why I do these quizzes rather than clobbering you on the midterm, where it's like surprise. No, nah, no, I, I hammer this because it's it's hard to get. Hard to get. I, I got. I got you. Right. Um. I got it all wrong from switching my answers from right to wrong for two of them. Yeah. Okay. So all humans are mammals. All X are all X are Y. No Y or Z. Therefore, no X or Z. Is that is that a valid form of argumentation? You, you got to think about it, and then ask yourself if this is true. Yeah. All humans are mammals. Yeah. yeah, that's true. No mammals have feathers. I don't know. Are there any species of mammals that grow feathers? No. Due on September 13th uh, at 10 a.m. Yeah, that's there. Next class. So our next class this is your daily work. All right, last one. Is this argument invalid, valid, and valid, not sound, or valid, and or sound invalid? Invalid or sound. Assume humans exist. Yeah. Humans are the only animals who have ever served in the U.S. Congress. Is that true or false? I don't know. Depends if you think there's lizard people, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to say, like, if, if you think that I, I think that there's lizard people in the U.S. Congress, like, you're, you're not paying attention to critical thinking. So... Uh, humans are the only animals to have served in the U.S. Congress. Probably, I'm, I'm going to say that's probably true. Yeah. Air Bud was a golden retriever. So I don't know if you guys uh, are familiar with the timeless classic Air Bud, which is about a golden retriever that played basketball. Based on a true story, which I didn't know uh, when I was writing this quiz, I, I was not aware that this was actually based on a true story. Um, based on a golden retriever named Air Buddy, who would try picking up a basketball in his mouth, but because it was slick, he would end up shooting it out of his mouth, and so his owner taught him to play basketball. So, uh, one of the most classic lines in all of cin cinema is, well, there's nothing in the rules that says a dog can't play basketball. <laughs> so, uh, the, there was actually a golden retriever named Air Buddy. Um, he was in my hometown of San Diego. Sure. In the mid to late 90s. Uh, conclusion. Air Bud never served in Congress. So the conclusion is clearly true. Right? Air Bud never served in Congress. Um, I'll give that one to you. You don't have to look it up. So uh, premise one. Humans are the only animals that have served in Congress. And premise two, Air Bud was a golden retriever. Okay. So I don't know. What do you what do you, what do you think? I, I I'm not gonna give you the answer. But uh do you think the premises are true? Do you think it's true that there have only been humans in Congress? What do you think? And this is the process you work through. You can't just be like, well, that's true, I think. Uh, sound. You know? Like, what do you think? Like, okay. 
You know, like that. And, and this is why I'm trying to teach you to be a critical thinker is you can't just be like, yeah, that's right. Uh, sound, right. You have to be like, okay, does the lot, does the logic work? Are the premises true? Those are the two questions you ask. Okay. So, um, does the logic work? Um, if no X is Y, Airbud is X, therefore X is not Y. That's what that's what the form of the argument is here. Yeah. Right? No no dog has ever served in Congress. Airbud was a dog. Therefore, Airbud did not serve in Congress. Does the logic work? The Yang, what do you think? Take a take a take a uh, take a shot of that one. What do you think? Not a trick question. Yeah, I don't really do trick questions. I don't have logic. <laughs> well, we'll talk more about it today. All right, so I'll, I'll let you guys chew on that one. Okay. I I don't do trick questions. I don't. You know, it's it's not going to be like. Uh, you know, the premise is false because there's lizard people in Congress. No, like, uh, you know, um, it's not going to be like, um, you know, some mammals are not chordates because somebody carved their spine out. No. Like, just look at the plain reading of the meaning of the word. You know, there's these aren't trick questions, okay? Uh, it's hard enough. <laughs> it's hard enough. It's hard enough without me needing to do trick questions. Trust me. Did you see the score of the last quiz? Trust me, it's hard enough as it is. Okay. So, Zuck the Lizard Man, yeah. Mammals are a subcategory of animals, yeah. Humans are a subcategory, humans are a subcategory of animals, too. Right? Humans are in Animalia. Yeah. Airbud for Congress? No, he died, unfortunately. Yeah. Sad. Cancer. So, um, happy Judgment Day, yeah. Uh, I don't have logic. So, um, I don't know. I don't know if you do a better job than <laughs> your head's going to explode. Yeah, but you, at least you've seen the three questions, right? So, you know, sit down, think about it. You know, then sit down and second guess yourself and be like, well, there are three questions and there's three possibilities, right? There's, Invalid, logic doesn't work. There's valid but not sound, where the logic works, but the premises are false. One or more of the premises are false. And there's sound, where both the logic works and the premises are true. So there's three questions, and there's three answers. There must be one of each. Wrong. I don't do that. <laughs> so don't, don't, don't second guess yourself into thinking that there's going to be one invalid, one valid, and one sound. Because I don't, I don't do that either. Okay. If I if I did that, I'd do it. I'd make it matching, right? For the, like the theories of truth, if I wanted there to be exactly one of each, so there could be duplicates. Okay. All right? Does this class of extra credit too? This got you screwed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do extra credit for sure. I'm I'm renowned for the amount of extra credit we do. Okay. Right. Just three questions. Yeah. So, and you you can take all the time in the world to do it because you are here either attending the lecture live or, or watching on, on YouTube. So spend as much time as you want on it. Let's do, uh, let's do a start a class next time. Okay. What's the extra credit like? Uh, it depends. Changes every year. Um, last semester I gave a talk on Irish music and sea shanties. So those are two different extra credits. Um, I sometimes teach meditation workshops. So yeah, just depends. Um, Typically, I do that around midterm season because students have um, stress around then. And my, my big one of my big things is not trying to stress students out, although it happens. It's kind of a it's kind of a natural side effect of you know teaching this stuff and quizzing on it. But um, I, I teach like stress reduction and stuff like that too. Imagine starting the ex actual work. Uh, no, not really. Uh, sometimes, like in, in my programming classes, usually I, I do offer 
much harder X credit. But this is kind of a fun class, so usually I do like fun X credit as well. All right, so let's talk more about, although, I don't know, meditation could be hard for some people. I don't know. You have to learn to breathe properly. It's crazy. Mm, it's so hard. Okay. And I, I'm almost sarcastic there, but actually not. <laughs> it actually can be. It actually can be hard. Like controlling your breathing can actually be hard for some people. Okay. Uh, argument, 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 argument. Evidence. Humans, you know. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. So, um... Uh, yeah, maybe do that for extra credit. That could be fun. So this is a CGP Grey video um, called Humans Need Not Apply, which is about AI uh, taking our jobs. It dirties germs. So we'll do that. It's an extra credit assignment. So uh, Humans Need Not Apply. Yeah, go ahead and watch that and write a two-page reaction video talking about where you agree, where you disagree. Put on Canvas. You know, cite your sources, and I will give you X credit. Meditating is helpful, but it's boring. <laughs> That's the point. Right? <laughs> That's, relaxation is supposed to be boring. Right? <laughs> I, I can only imagine. Like, like, I want more exciting meditation. You, you go in there, everyone's like sitting, like cross-legged. A guy pulls out a guy. He's like, meditate, meditate. <laughs> I just, I just had that image in my head all the time. You have like one of these guys marching around up and down, screaming at you to meditate and get in, get in. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, I almost fell asleep through it. Yeah, that's actually why uh, energy drinks are invented, and it's specifically tea. Um, monks actually invented tea as a um, stimulant so they wouldn't fall asleep and meditating. True story. Okay. Um, so an outline how to write it, just freely write it. It's extra credit, I don't care. Just uh, make sure you cite some sources, use proper argumentation techniques, you know. So. Okay. Uh, talk about those but later um so yeah, we were talking last time about humans like taking our jobs right like um displacing truck drivers and and things like that so that's a interesting um that's an interesting video i should warn you i don't obviously agree with all of it um then again it's very rare it's very rare that i agree with everything somebody says you know, it's just the nature of life okay so, uh, yeah, where is it? Modest Tolens. Dang it. Uh, I just put it to night mode and forgot to save it. Um, hmm. Let's just do it on uh, on one note. So we we've been talking about the the valid and invalid forms of argumentation without really explaining what that means. Okay, so we're gonna get more into that now. Um, <laughs> no, let's not do this, let's create a new binder. You, let's use one, rename, this is from spring 2021. Make a new section called site one, fall. Um, Let's talk about more about what makes the reasoning valid and invalid. Okay, I think I think for figuring out the premises being true or false, like I think that's the easy part actually. Um, you know, uh, have only humans been in Congress? Like I, I don't think that's the hard part to the problem. You know what I mean? So. Uh, Lynn James, can you move me inside? I don't, I don't know what that means. What do you mean, Lynn? Are you not in... 
Oh, he's in weird. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me. Why is it so slow to drag? There we go. Okay. All right, Lynn, are you in? Yeah. All, all you have to do is click on the on the thing where it says class. You're in the the wrong voice channel, but it should be fine. It's an effect of monster. You just drink Mountain Dew. Stay away from energy drinks. Are bad for you. I don't get how people order a lot of sugar in their coffee. Yeah, for me, for me, coffee is just coffee and milk. You know, I'd, yeah, sugar. Like, I avoid it except when I'm deliberately trying to like eat a dessert or something. Um, drag them into voice chat. Yeah, okay. Uh, drinks are only good cold. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hardest part of the quiz: you second guess yourselves. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. But uh, remember, I don't. I didn't. You know, just sit down and be like, all right, you know, uh, are the premises true? If yes, then you have two possibilities. You have sound or invalid. If uh, uh, to A, to B, no, if the premises are not true, then you've got two possibilities. You've got valid and valid. Valid, but not sound. Sound and valid. Okay. There is a decision tree for um, these kinds of quizzes. Okay. Are the premises true? If they are, then either it's going to be sound or invalid. If one or more of them are not true, then it's either going to be valid or invalid. Okay. So how do you figure out the logic? Okay. So let me give you the the simplest uh, two simplest valid arguments. One is called modus ponens, ponens, and modus Tollens, which I've heard some people pronounce Toyens. I'm just going to call it Tollens because that's how my professor spoke. Okay. So, uh, coffee doesn't work for you? Yeah. I, I, I mostly just like the taste of coffee. Okay, so we're going to learn the two simplest valid arguments. Okay. One, modus ponens, and two, modus tollens. Okay. So, modus ponens has this form. If x, then y. That's premise one. Premise two, x is true. Conclusion, y is true. If I eat a chicken, I become a chicken. Premise one. Premise two, I eat a chicken. Premise three, I became a chicken. If x, then y, x is true, y is true, check. This is valid. This is valid reasoning. Yeah. Okay. You used to play League. <laughs> right? Not sound. You don't become a chicken if you eat a chicken. Right? But the form of the argument is fine. If you eat a chicken, then you'll become a chicken. I ate a chicken. You became a chicken. Valid, perfectly valid deductive reasoning. Okay? The uh, modus tollens is harder for... This is usually pretty straightforward. Like, this is usually pretty easy for students to get. The reason why so many of you got the chicken thing wrong was because you just looked at the conclusion and went, nah, that's wrong. Invalid. Not, not how you do it. Okay, so second thing is called modus tollens. Let's clean this up a little bit. And for modus tollens, 
form, this is a little harder for, for students to get. Premise one. If x, then y. And if you're saying like, wait, this sounds like a computer program, you'd be right. There is a very tight philosophical connection between programming and philosophy and logic. Like, they go together really, really well. And, um, you know, this would be like an if statement in a programming language for those of you that have programmed before, right? Um, but also things like ethics, I think, more computer science people need to study. <laughs> you know, just, you know, just for the well-being of humanity, I don't know. Uh, you're on Fracture right now. Everyone's talking about gaming on, on chat. That's fine. Whatever. Uh, okay. So if X and Y, not Y. Okay. This means not Y. Uh, in other words, uh, Y is false. I use computer science terminology rather than other terminologies because there's a lot of different terminologies. And um, it's annoying keeping track of all the different terminologies. You can also write y is false this way. You can also write not y like this. A lot of different ways for writing. So I let Lynn into the to the voice chat and then he's just talking about the games. Hmm. Okay. Uh Uh, we got we got twenty minutes left in class. Okay. So this is actually this is actually important. So pay attention to this. So if it must be true, if, if x is true, it must be true that y is true. So think about this. Um, if it if it's if x is true, then y is true. If x is if, if y is false. Um, logically speaking, x must be false. Okay. If uh, um, if every time a student talks about League of Legends and and <laughs> I'm kidding, um, if every time a student asks for a Minecraft invite on uh, the chat channel. <laughs> uh, no, okay, let's, let's do a more serious example. Um, mm, uh, if I have an apartment, then I pay rent on it. I am not paying rent on an apartment right now. Therefore, I can conclude that I do not have an apartment. Okay. Yeah. Right? So if I have an apartment, then I will pay rent on it. Premise one. Premise two, I'm not paying rent on an apartment right now. Conclusion, I do not have an apartment. Because if I did have an apartment, I would definitely be paying rent on it, and I'm not paying rent on it, so there's no way for me to have an apartment if the premises are true. I will pay rent, remember that one. <laughs> All right. so, so think about it. If it's true, if, if it's true that it, uh, I will pay rent every time, it, which it might not be. This might not be sound, right? Um, but we're talking about validity right now. We're not talking about sound. If every time I have an apartment, I do pay rent on it, there is no way for me to have an apartment right now if I'm not paying rent. You understand? It's impossible for me to have an apartment. Therefore, we say, I do not have an apartment. So in that case, X is I have an apartment. And why is I am paying rent on it? Okay. So, 
You'll pay. You'll get your rent when you fix this damn door. Yeah, <laughs> happened to me in real life. Uh, a friend of mine comes into my house. The doorknob comes off in his hand, and we're all just sitting around like, "The hell just happened?" So we reported to the property manager. They sent out the guy to fix it. He says it looks like somebody kicked in the door. I was like, "No." Nah. You want me to get witness statements from the 10 people there at my party that saw it come off in the guy's hand? And they're like, no, nah, that's right, we'll pay for it. It's okay. Water leaking from the ceiling. Sent me a letter. Hey, by the way, we discovered there's asbestos in your apartment. So, sign this, uh, sign this document absolving us of any liability. I went, no. No, I'm not going to sign that. Seems like a bad idea. <laughs> They didn't do anything about it. Yeah. Somebody asks you to just sign something that doesn't benefit you at all. I don't see why on earth I, you should sign it. Water builds up in the ceiling and it pops open. Yeah, yeah. I had my bookshelf there and the ceiling collapsed and all the plaster came down. Ruined a couple hundred bucks worth of books. Yeah. Yeah, true story. Great place to live, by the way. College living. Um, yeah, I'm like taking pictures of this and like sending it to the property management. They're like, not doing anything about it. So eventually I have to call the landlord himself and he comes out and he's like, holy crap, dude. How long has it been going on like this? I'm like, I don't know, three months. <laughs> you want to see my logs of all the times they call the property management company? So, yeah. And then, and then when I moved out, they didn't want to give us any of our, any of our, any of our security deposit back. And I'm like, oh, hell no. I have had enough of your, your nonsense. And so I sued him. And got my deposit back. Pain in the ass. Do not trust property management companies. Let me just tell you that. Okay, so, um, like, we had to clean the carpet. Like, we had to repaint the place. Yeah. Yeah, of course you did. Because you have to repaint it every 10 years. That's part of what it means to own a place. You have to repaint it. You can't charge me for repainting it when it's it's 10-year, you know, thing was up. It's ridiculous. Okay. So let's see some more examples. Um, if uh, uh, um, x is a square, then x is a rectangle. Premise one. Premise two. X is in fact a square. Conclusion. X is a rectangle. What do you think? Valid or invalid? Let's not worry about soundness right now. If X is a square, then X is a rectangle. Premise one. Premise two. X is a square. Conclusion. X is a rectangle. It is odd. Yeah, this is... Is this modus ponens or modus tollens? Good. Very good. I'll go. Is this modus ponens or modus tollens? Check your short-term memory. Those of you talking about Genshin Impact or you'd be like, what? What's he talking about? Which one? MP or NT? MT. Modus ponens or modus tollens? If X then Y, X therefore Y. So this is modus ponens. Okay. Let's do another one. Example two. If a mm, if I see a cow, I will. What do you think?
if I see a cow, I will most certainly every time do what? I'm driving in a car and I see a cow. I will most certainly move at it. That is absolutely correct. And I will usually announce to the rest of the car, there's a cow over there. Okay. Tip it over. <laughs> if I see a cow, I will I will move. So that's the premise one. Um, premise two. I see... Conclusion, what? It takes a lot of effort to like butcher a cow. Like, I don't know. Every time you see a cow, you just run over with a machete. You're like, come here, Betsy. Yeah. <laughs> so, premise one. Every time I see a cow, I'm going to move. And usually announce that there's a cow. I'm not talking about like passing by cattle yards, you know. You're up in the mountains driving, and there's just like a random cow there, which is kind of a weird sight, you know. But they, they cows actually like the mountains. So, um, if I see a cow, I will moo. I see a cow. What is the conclusion? I see a cow get hungry. Nice, nice, nice use of the eye of the tiger. All right, uh, yeah, I will. Move. Sure. Is this uh, modus ponens or modus tollens? Secret cow level in Diablo 2. I don't know if you guys ever played that game. Are you guys all choosing modus tollens because, like, my previous example was modus ponens? Was that, is that why? Like, there's two options. I've given two examples. Therefore, you know, it must be MT. If x is a square, then x is a rectangle. x is a square, x is a rectangle. This is modus ponens. If I see a cow, I will move. I see a cow, I will move. This is also modus ponens. Yep. Yep. If x, then y. x is true, therefore y is true. Logical implication. And Zybooks will probably help with this as well. So, uh, let's uh, pause here because we're running out of time. And we will pick up more on MP and MT next time. But let's talk about the Zybooks and stuff. So, uh, a lot of you uh, didn't buy the Zybooks. And even though it's like right here, it's like the first link, like you have to buy the textbook. It's required for this class. And a lot of people are like, wait, what? It's required? It's literally right there. It's fine. If you didn't do the Zybooks, I'll give you guys like a week to do it. Whatever. I don't care. Just message me when you've when you've done all of it. Then I'll log on to Zybooks and verify you did it and give you the points. And uh, I am a I am a generous god. Okay. It's a 300 reference. So if you uh, come over here into Zybooks, um, it'll tell you which sections you need to read. And you need to read 1.1 and then... Um, and then the uh, there's a little bit on piracy as well because we were talking about piracy last week. Can I get up here into this? And then there is a new Zybooks that is going to be due um, next week as well. So this is a really short reading. It's 1.1, learn about propositions, logical operators, and then a little bit on uh, piracy, digital piracy, not actual piracy. Yeah. Um, and then the uh, week three assignment, which is the one issued yesterday. Um, it's 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5. And so this is going to teach you um, like what we're talking about today. Uh, they use different terminology than what I use, like the little gun, like the little finger gun symbol. That means not. Uh, this means or. And that means and. Okay. So you're going to get uh, bombarded with uh, uh, these kinds of things. Um, and teach you a lot about the uh, terminology of logic and stuff like that. So, uh, 
if you mow Ms. Mr. Smith's lawn, then he will pay you. Okay. If he mows lawn and he does not pay you, that statement was a lie. Okay. Otherwise, it's a true statement. Um, boom. Yeah, so it's going to run through. Um, uh, you don't have to do these things anytime there's like a, a additional exercises and like um, you know, like I, I've had students like write it out on a piece of paper and scan it and send it to me. No, I don't. I don't want to see that. <laughs> ninety-four students in this class. I do not have time to grade ninety-four things by hand. Like, trust me. Like, just doing the essays on on Canvas because there's ninety-four essays less whoever didn't do it uh, times three because there was your essay and then the two peer responses. So I have like two hundred and seventy essays to read. So if you're wondering why I'm like, yeah, it doesn't have to be that long. That's why, <laughs> because it takes freaking forever to read 300 essays. Trust me on this. So, um, yeah, don't, you can do these if you'd like, if you don't understand it, then solve it and look at the answer. It's a great way of learning because if the stuff's going to be on the midterm, you know, and, uh, you can see like from our last quiz, it's hard, you know, or, or the human brain naturally, the human brain naturally doesn't think like a computer, you know, uh, it's just, it's an, it's a weird, it's a weird way of thinking, you know, it's not a normal way of thinking. And, uh, so you have to sort of train yourself, um, in the ways of logic and it will help you become a critical thinker. Even if you're not a computer science major, it will help you become a critical thinker and think things through logically. And, um, It'd be useful for you no matter what career you have. Yeah, so, you must. I must become the machine. I am the machine. I don't know if you guys ever saw that stand-up bit. It's pretty good. It's called How I Joined the Russian Mafia. It's a great talk. It's straight about college. So, uh, yeah, I am the machine. Yeah, that guy. It's pretty, pretty funny. I don't know how much of it's true, but it's pretty good. Okay. Um, time to overthink on the quiz. Uh, yeah, you might want to do the Zybox first. I don't know. It might help. Who knows? Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, if you haven't done any of the Zybox yet, you're going to do one one through one five, And then uh, Global Impact, not Genshin Impact. <laughs> it's fine. I played Genshin Impact briefly. Um, it's too boring for me. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Um, and, uh, so global impact, not Genshin impact, uh, nine, eight through, uh, nine, 10. And the thing will tell you which sections you have to do. And, and if you check your grade on, on, on canvas, it updates automatically as you do it. So you'll see your, your points on the score kind of fill in over time. Okay. Zelda is better. Yeah. Breath of the wild is an amazing game. Come fight me on that. Okay. Um, and do the readings first to have a better grasp. Yeah, might be, might be, might be useful. I, I, I give the readings not to punish you guys, but because it actually helps, really. Okay. Yeah, played it for a minute. Open world. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, did he wrestle here? Um, wish me luck on the quiz. Yeah. Good luck on the quiz. Uh, I've. Thank you for attending class live today. Your benefit is you get a have a preview of the quiz so you don't have to take all the time in the world to think about it before Monday. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's it for today. I uh, hope you learned a little something and we're going to, we're, we're going to keep doing these things until the, uh, the class average comes up to a level where, um, I'm happy with it. So I'm, we're going to get you all competent in it and then midterm. <laughs> Midterm on week six. You got plenty of time. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And I uh, hope you have a great weekend. And yeah, I'll see you on Monday. All right. Peace out.